it's going ahead for Amy Coney Barrett. And in this, this is, I've just noticed something remarkable about this entire process. And maybe it's because, you know, the president and the coronavirus diagnosis and him going back to the White House. I don't know if it's just because that in this news cycle has maybe overshadowed it. Or maybe it's really because out of all of the nasty attacks that have been uh, levied at, at Amy Coney Barrett, none of them have stuck. They have attacked her as not being an attentive mother. They've attacked her because she adopted children. They've attacked her because she is Catholic. They've attacked her for having a supportive husband. All of the things that, you know, normally everyone looks at as, you know, this is great. These are great things. They've, they've been attacked as, as negatives and they have, it hasn't really worked. And, and so, and they, and they really haven't even been able to take apart uh, any of her judicial work either. In fact, it seems as though everything is just process arguments and that's not really even having that much of an impact. And this has led some people to say, is this real, is she like the role model going forward for politics? That's at least what a lot of people are thinking, and that's what a lot of her friends know her as. Charlie Winfield is one of those friends. He's one of several who agreed to speak to us and give a a bigger, bigger inside look and humanize the woman whose name for a lot of people, they just get to know her through headlines and through, you know, the 30 to 60 second news segments that are done on her and her family. Charlie Winfield himself is a very successful attorney. He also uh, is a broadcaster and he is in Mississippi. He graduated with Amy Coney Barrett from Notre Dame Law School in 1997. And unlike some of those people at Rhodes College who just went to the same building that she went to. He actually was there and knew her at the time. So, Charlie, we really appreciate your time with us today. Thank you. Oh, well, I'm glad to be here, and I'm, I'm happy to be here to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is Amy Barrett. We knew her as Amy Coney at the time. But, you know, we've come to a point in our judicial history and in our country's history where nominees for the Supreme Court are being judged on their individual views of the Constitution and the interpretation, which is kind of new. We, we've turned it into much more of a political process. It used to be kind of looking at the person, whether they were good and decent people and fair and ethical. And if that is to be the test, I can tell you that we won't do better as a country than than Amy Barrett. She is an, one of the most principled, one of the most honest, one of the most fundamentally decent human beings that I know. Yeah, I remember when I first actually heard her speak about this, she was giving remarks about uh, John Adams and the court case that I think was so unbelievably instrumental in in the formation of America. I don't know if we would have a United States without Adams doing what he did in defending the British there after the Boston massacre, and he put everything on the line and her attention to that particular case and the way she spoke about it, for those unfamiliar, uh, everybody knows the Boston Massacre, but maybe a fewer people know that Adams stepped up even against the colonist sentiment, uh, which was overwhelmingly against the British. And he defended those, those soldiers saying that, you know, we can't escape, and putting this in layman's terms, we can't escape from King George and say that we want a free country with due process, and yet do the, the very first act that we would take is to deny it ourselves. And that is a very principled stance because it it also shows that there there are people who are willing to bear the cost for maintaining those principles and in looking at at Amy Barrett's uh, her career and definitely just from those who actually knew her uh, that seems to be uh, what we're getting here someone who's very principled who does go by the law and isn't motivated by by what they feel because and and Charlie and we're talking with Charlie uh, Winfield here who graduated with Amy Coney Barrett Uh, everybody has, I mean, you even as an attorney, you have your personal beliefs, but that's separate from the law that you were practicing. Yeah, and I love that Adam story, by the way. That's one of my favorite stories of history because what it shows is the courage of conviction that he had, but also shows the trust at the time that the other colonists had in him to understand that he was a good and decent person doing the right thing. You know, Amy Coney has a lot of that same Amy Coney Barrett now, of course, has a lot of that same courage of conviction. But the thing that I I really like about her is, you know, there are a lot of people in the law who you feel like start with the result they want and then create the justification for it. You find where Amy is really one who starts with the principle 
who starts with the statute, who starts with the Constitution, crazy enough, and then follows it forward. And whether the outcome is one that we like or would meet her personal preferences isn't really the test. It really gets down to the kind of the fundamental question of what do you follow? Do we pick the outcome we like and revise it, work backwards, or do we start with a principle and work the outcome? I'll tell you one of the other things that really strikes me about Amy. You know, I actually joke, and this is, unfortunately, there's a little bit of truth to this. I met Amy about two days before we started class. And I remember we were both from the South and we guess both had spent time in the flyover nation that uh, you've written about. And so we had a little bit of a bond there. And I remember thinking when I met Amy, you know, boy, if she sticks with me, I'll get her through this. You know? And huh. what you see in that kind of the lesson, I was actually talking to some college students here in my hometown yesterday that were asking me about her. And I said, if she was here, what you would think is she's just like our mom. She's like our sister. She's like our aunts. She is just a very normal person who just happens to be brilliant and does a job. You know, she is not one of these people who walks into the room and tries to impress everybody about how smart she is. She is someone who walks into the room and you fairly quickly recognize how smart she is. And that to me made her stand out in law school more than anything. It's a group of people who are trying desperately to get attention and to borrow the, the sports phrase, Amy is one who kind of lets the game come to her. You figure out quickly how smart she is without her ever telling you. And I mean this in the highest sense. Whatever one has a view of her interpretation, her originalism views, you know, those are legitimate debates that people can have. But as far as the character of the human being, she's she's just outstanding. Yeah, I uh in in all of this, and we're talking about the uh, confirmation process here that begins on October 12th with Amy Coney Barrett talking to one of her classmates who graduated Notre Dame 97 with her, Charlie Winfield, who uh, himself is a successful attorney out in Mississippi. And uh, I, I'm sure that you, you know, you watched everything that happened with Brett Kavanaugh. And that was uh, uh, just, it was like, uh, I was young when Clarence Thomas happened. And, but I was, I remember it. I was, you know, in junior high. And I, I remember very well how all of that was playing out. And uh, this seemed very, the Kavanaugh hearing seemed very much like that. Are you nervous or right when, when this looked as though that this was going to be her path, were you nervous or are you nervous that uh, f uh, because of the the fear that seems to face these nominees when they get to that Senate hearing, how do you think that that she's going to weather under that pressure? Well, I, I am nervous just as a friend. You just hate to see anybody go through that. At the same time, I view it a little bit uh, like an opportunity because it's going to be a little bit of an unfair fight. because She actually understands the Constitution, unlike many people who will be asking her about it. And you think back about the interaction with uh, Senator Feinstein and the, the comment about the dogma living loudly within her. If anything, all that criticism did was endear her to people mm -hmm. rather than push her away. You know, it's really interesting, particularly you run out of things to criticize somebody on and, and you kind of fall back to the religion angle. And to me, you find out that with Amy, it's not so much that she claims to be a person of faith. It's that she actually believes it and actually mm -hmm. practices it, I think, that defends people. Our government's filled with Catholics, a lot of them from the Northeast who don't necessarily adhere to it, I suppose. But it, let me say this, too, about Amy and her faith. Never one time, and we were close friends, never one time did Amy talk to me about, hey, you need to be doing this. You need to believe this. You need to join me for this. She was not an evangelical. She was somebody who practiced her faith, but she practiced it quietly. She lived by those things, but she did not try to convince everybody else that they needed to follow her. She wasn't looking for apostles. She was just trying to live a good life. But because of that, because of how firm she is in her faith, because of how intelligent she is, because candidly, a lot of these senators are going to be playing on her home turf if they want to fight about this, I think she'll be fine. I just, I hate that our country has come to this for either party, for nominees of either party, that they have to go through this process. Right. It is. It is unfortunate to see, and um, but it looks like it is going to start. It'll take place. I think the first date is uh, October twelfth, 
And you you brought up that uh, her response to Diane Feinstein. That was just such a, a great response. And last question, we're talking with Charlie Winfield, who graduated with Amy Coney Barrett, uh, Notre Dame, 97. Just to get insight, because you hear so much from people who just didn't even know her just because they went to, you know, uh, undergrad with her or they just, you know, they read a headline and they want to pass judgment. But that her response to that I thought was so great and she brought up that you know no one really has asked and she had inferred this no one's really asked anyone else and you mentioned this too Charlie and I love that point you know you have a lot of people in government that are people of faith and they're of various denominations but that really has never been asked of of anybody else before that I recall at any kind of hearing you know your faith lives loudly within you and is that going to somehow uh, detract from your work as a jurist why do you think that they asked that of her? Is it is it religious bigotry? Is it because maybe they thought? And I hate to play I hate to play this angle, but it's a genuine question because she's a female. They thought that they could maybe perhaps ask that more so than of someone like Scalia or others. What are, what is your thought on that? I think there's a little bit of that. Um, I, I think all those things, and I think there's also this idea of just trying to paint her to be old fashioned. This idea of clinging to values that, at least in my part of the country, are, are fairly normal and uh, well accepted and valued. Things like having respect for elders and having your kids say yes ma'am and no ma'am and things like that that you would see with an Amy Coney Barrett. And so for me, I, I think really what it speaks to is kind of the desperation. Mm. Again, I go back to the idea we could have a perfectly legitimate debate about whether this originalist view of the Constitution is a good one or whether we ought to be reading things into it. Those are discussions that take place in law schools every day, and it's a discussion she's comfortable having. I think it's just a situation where they've run out of things to say, and so it comes down to let's try to make her out to be a religious nut. Mm. And I'm just telling you, she isn't. <laughs> she is, one of the, again, like I said, one of the most fundamentally decent and good people that I've ever met, regardless of faith. Yeah, and she will be, if confirmed, uh, the only uh, mother on the court and the only uh, mother on the Supreme Court that has uh, young school-aged children at home with her at the time. And there's a lot of young women that are looking up to her. And uh, really, a lot of young men, too, just a lot of people in general that are that are looking up to the example that she is setting. Never, And it's rare. How crazy is this? It's rare to see someone who is not nasty in politics or in law or anything like this in, in this regard. So uh, I know we'll all be watching on October 12th. And uh, Charlie Winfield, I know you will be watching your friend as well. Thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. Take care.